Now, before the party begins, let's go over the details. You think I don't see you for who you really are? Good, good, good. We reap what we sow. Follow me. <laughs> Just doing a little sport. Uh, are there any words uh, to describe treachery uh, that don't sound feminine? I don't really know, but in any case, uh, I can't think of any. Uh, this movie is an SJW movie. You can tell by the way these animals are reacting to it. Now, we would like to see it fail um, miserably, and that is why um, people on the internet right now are doing this latest, uh, they're involved in this latest craze. These are the cool kids of the internet, and they're saying, you know what, instead of seeing um, uh, uh, Captain Marvel, instead of seeing Captain Marvel, go see Alita Battle Angel instead. The gate debacles that grew out of Steve Bannon's angry gamer culture war required a strict us versus them ideology to function. We've seen American political discourse play out in much the same way. You're either with us or against us. You're doing theater when you should be doing debate, which would be great. Do do no, so it's, it's not, not honest. What you do is not honest. What you do is partisan hackery. Advertisers have been playing into people's innate desire to categorize and segregate everything for decades. Columns free. What Nintendo. And as such, SJW gets used as a catch-all term to otherize people and dismiss any need to ever listen to them. And the meaning of the term will change depending on who is using it or who they're using it against. Popular anti-feminist YouTuber Sargon of Akkad even admitted as such in one debate with Destiny. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, sure. I'm just curious. Do you consider somebody like Martin Luther King or Malcolm X? Are these SJWs to you? Or? Not to me personally, but that's because I agree with their philosophy. Okay, so you've literally defined SJW as somebody you disagree with. <laughs> like, is that really the definition? So, that's what you just said. Yeah, kind of. I think there. everyone has, like... Someone is an SJW to someone else. It was only natural for this culture war waged by the people whose entire identities were based on their consumer habits to attempt to sow discord and demand people divide into tribalistic camp with screams of debate me fading into the night. So they hid behind Alita Battle Angel, demanding that people who oppose the feminist politics of Captain Marvel go see Alita instead. Don't believe the lies uh, that anybody is trying to peddle right now, and there are many trying to peddle it. Only men hated this film, because that is a load of horseshit. So, let's talk about Battle Angel Alita and why I recommend you see this film this weekend. It's called The Alita Challenges. See, they can't be sexist if instead they're going to see the movie about a robot girl with huge anime eyes and a barely pubescent body. Then it was attempting to create a rivalry with Shazam. It got to a point where Shazam star Zachary Levy made a video telling fans to knock it off and go enjoy both movies. Completely fictitious, uh, uh, like reviews and posts of Brie Larson's Captain Marvel and some, like trying to pit Shazam against it and you know saying they're going to support us and not them because of things that they are, by the way, making up. Things that they're saying they saw some screening and for anyone out there who thinks you're doing me a favor or you're doing Shazam a favor or you're doing Warner Brothers or what you're not you, this is not helping anyone or anything uh, there is no competition <laughs> there is no conspiracy guys you need anyone out there who's holding on to some bone like they need to t pick a side and pick a fight is sorely mistaken now with Avengers Endgame they're attempting to invent a rivalry between Brie Larson and the rest of the Avengers cast I like this one they're taking snippets from press interviews and blowing them completely out of context and proportion to invent a conflict where there is none. Don Cheadle came out recently to call bullshit on any allegations of conflict between the cast members. But that just gets written off as more Disney puppet masters. We're all good. Hope you enjoy the movie. We're all good. Why don't you just say we love Brie? I love Brie Larson. Now, we're all good. We all know the majority of the Avengers cast are good. We've seen you guys interacting for years. We've seen you with the chemistry, with the respect, with the love that you have for each other. We've seen that. With Brie Larson, something different is going on, and we're gonna show some video evidence to support my claims. Ho thinks he's a better leader than Holdo because he's a man. So he starts mansplaining. And look at this mansplaining, such a mansplainer. But what he really should have done is trust women. You know, no matter what, it doesn't matter what the situation. Even if it seems like that particular woman is about to get you and everyone you love incinerated by a million lasers, just trust her. 
She knows what's best. She is living her truth. Hashtag me too. Hashtag time's up. In summary. When The Last Jedi came out, we saw a campaign against the film that was meaner and more organized than anything previously seen. Rotten Tomatoes was brigaded by bots that left thousands of negative reviews. And just as toxic American politics continued to poison all discourse, the campaign against The Last Jedi got so large that Russian trolls piled on to help sow division and forge animosity. This coordinated assault was said to be on behalf of DC fans and broadly against the Disney-owned geek properties that had nothing to do with race or gender. But this mob conveniently ignored all the films with white male leads. So why does any of this matter? Who cares if something gets artificially downvoted online? Well, it's because Rotten Tomatoes has become so ubiquitous and integrated that these artificial scores follow a film around. Go to buy tickets online, right next to the buy button are aggregate scores directly imported from Rotten Tomatoes. And if you haven't been paying attention to the culture war that was being waged against a film for starring a woman, then you might notice the abysmally low audience scores come to the conclusion that people didn't like the movie, and you should go see something else. The goal is to create the illusion of mass consensus to affect actual ticket sales. Who cares if that mass consensus is entirely fictitious, and an overwhelming number of the bad reviews were left by people who didn't exist until a script invented a name, signed up for an email account, registered with Rotten Tomatoes, and left a negative review, a few hundred at a time. After The Last Jedi, Rotten Tomatoes was insistent that the systems on their site couldn't be subject to malicious intent. But since the obvious brigading of Captain Marvel, they've adjusted their attitudes and are trying to clamp down on obvious abuse. Up until recently, Rotten Tomatoes allowed people to give a movie want to see ratings, but Captain Marvel exposed how those systems could be gamified and exploited by people wanting to cause damage. Oh look, they got rid of this tomato score and audience score at completely. Well, there wasn't a tomato score before. But you know what's even more nefarious about this? What's even more disgusting? Is that they put only an option to say that you want to see it. That's it. So all you can do is leave positive feedback. Wow. It's not hard to see why these channels spend so much time targeting a single woman and waging war against her. Because as we've seen, it's just good business. It also creates an environment that self-reinforces and reinvests itself. When the old Brie Larson story becomes stale, just invent a new one. Who cares if it's true or not? We've already seen this play out with the Trump administration. Sir, our press secretary gave alternative facts to that, but the point remains Wait a alternative that facts. We're telling easily disprovable lies to the order of the day, and all you have to do is never admit it's a lie and just tell a bigger lie to cover it up. Because at the end of the day, those who are already in your tribe will believe it, and the other content creators in your tribe will reinforce it. it becomes like a wrestling match where everyone knows the conflict is staged and scripted but no one really cares. They came for the performance and to come together against their shared hatred of a mutual villain, feminism. Then stop being such a self-righteous twat everywhere and then maybe people won't be so upset with you. you Every once in a while, one of these YouTubers drops their cafe bait and acknowledges that their outrage against the women they continually rant about only exists because it brings in the largest audience. She's made 18 videos about Captain Marvel's as free larger of the last month. There's got to be a better use of her time and energy. Really? Can you think of one that would require me, that would involve me making as much money as I do off of these videos? Because I can't. Right now, those videos work really well and are popular. So here's the deal. Free Larson videos right now are algorithm gold on YouTube. I'll be the first to admit that I have profited decently off the back of horrible movie, Captain Marvel, and worst person, Brie Larson. There's very little sincere about these outrage peddlers. To them, it's just a business, and their audience is an income. But there becomes a circular chicken and egg environment that rises out of these anti-feminist communities. Sure, Jeremy may only have made hundreds of videos attacking Brie Larson, but that's only because that's what his audience demands of him. He's a drug dealer. Where every hit is free, but also please stop by the meth merch store and donate to his Patreon. Being a part of an ecosystem that continually pumps out this content is, by sheer volume of it, constantly pulling in new viewers, and statistically younger viewers, introducing them to an ideology built on the hatred of women. You can even watch the radicalizing effect this profit machine has on the content creators too. 
After becoming virtually unhirable in the comics industry as an illustrator, Ethan Van Skyfer now earns a living by pandering to the anti-feminist audiences that constantly demand he push his extremism further and further. Here he is engaged in the incredibly normal act of cutting the heads off of Rose Tico Star Wars toys, just to make a buck. Recently reformed alt-writer Faraday Speaks recently gave an interview where he talked about how the alt-right dominates YouTube by blanketing the platform with so much low quality content that eventually the algorithm has to push it to the top. Where they content swarm, they do hours and hours of live stream. Like some of these guys will live stream for eight hours a day and they bring they guests on that? the show during these live streams. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Well, they do of, they, yeah, I know. And they just throw up lo-fi content like what I'm doing here. They don't do that green screen and shit back there. They just throw up a tart behind them and they start talking Yeah, and they just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and then they bring guests on the show and they oh, yeah. cross stream but the platforms are already capitalizing on delivering this content to us former facebook engineer tristan harris describes how social platforms are driving us towards content that makes us mad if this is making you feel a little bit of outrage notice that that thought just comes over you outrage is a really good way also of getting your attention because we don't choose outrage it happens to us and if you're the Facebook news feed, whether you'd want to or not, you actually benefit when there's outrage. Because outrage doesn't just schedule a, a reaction in an emotional time space for you. We want to share that outrage with other people. So we want to hit share and say, can you believe the thing that they said? And so outrage works really well at getting attention such that if Facebook had a choice between showing you the outrage feed and a calm news feed, they would want to show you the outrage feed, not because someone consciously chose that, but because that worked better at getting your attention. People who are outraged are more engaged and more profitable for platforms than people who are content. YouTube has a vested interest in delivering new content that keeps you in a state of anger and anxiety. And the people who run these anti-feminist channels know this. They see that when they attack women, their numbers go up. The end result is a self-reinforcing culture that is radicalizing youth to hate women, to hate people of color, to hate Muslims, to hate LGBT people. Recently Vito Gesualdi posted a video where he had a one-sided debate with one of my tweets about the upcoming Joker movie. As he's calling me out and bravely defeating the straw man he built in my place, there's links to all his channels and his Patreon for you to help support this fine content. Scroll down in the comments, and it didn't take long for it to turn into a full-on calls for anti-Semitic extremist violence. We've seen how this becomes a radicalization pipeline. What starts as an anti-feminist and anti-SJW ranting for lulls can, for some, lead down a further rabbit hole, one that leads towards full-blown white nationalism and violent extremism. Because sometimes online extremist hate for lulls has a habit of manifesting as real-life terrorism and murder. And it doesn't take much to land on this stuff. Watch one Joe Rogan clip or any number of benign videos about movies and comics. And before long, YouTube will start recommending these anti-feminist videos to you. The algorithm is actively driving people there. So I wish there was a silver lining to any of this, but the reality is a lot of disingenuous people are making a lot of money off of poisoning discourse and forcing an arbitrary tribalism. And if we're looking to the social media platforms for help, it's never going to come. Maybe it's just human nature. Maybe it's just who we are. But at the very least, I hope this trip through perpetual culture war being waged on YouTube has helped illustrate just how much of it is propped up by opportunism in a system that's built to capitalize on all our most base emotions. Because at least if we can bring a heightened awareness with us to the media we consume, we can control the effect it has over us in our lives. And if you're one of the people who makes this shit content, just stop. There's better ways to earn a buck, because in the words of a great man, Marvel has always been and always will be a reflection of the world right outside our window. That world may change and evolve, but the one thing that will never change is the way we tell our stories of heroism. Those stories have room for everyone, regardless of their race, gender, religion, or color of their skin. The only things we don't have room for are hatred, intolerance, and bigotry. We're all part of one big family, the human family. In other words, 
Excelsior! Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this series and found it really informative. I'm planning on making a whole bunch more videos in the future, but I'm also a really busy editor, so I'll be making them when I can. I set up a Patreon account. You can donate if you like, if you found content worthwhile and worth supporting, or you can just share it with other people or enjoy the videos. Either way is fine with me. But regardless, I already have a Patreon subscriber. I've got Maggie, so that is super awesome. Thanks for, thanks for helping out, Maggie. And I hope that this video lived up to your expectations, as do the future videos. Alright, I'll see you guys soon.